I vow to detain and interrogate suspected criminals according to Guardian Protocol. It was 49 days after the neutralizer exercise when Yashi turned 16. He woke up thinking about his father, a man who was fading into a distant memory. Pinzo and Val were starting to feel more like his real family, and the academy more like his real home. Footsteps echoed from the balcony. Pinto spoke quietly from across the room. Do you hear that? Yashi jolted into a sitting position. A silhouette stood on the other side of the glass, the moon glowing behind it. (gasps) Happy birthday, Yashi. (sighs) Not funny. You scared us. How the hell did you get up here? Balcony. Well, yeah. But you climbed? You could have knocked. Val, why? She shrugged. I just wanted to see if I could. Ah, typical. Close the door, please. It's freezing. As Vel closed the balcony door, Yashi lit the lantern on his nightstand, and a golden glow filled the room. Birthdays aren't a big deal here, you know? Vel sat on the edge of his bed. I know. But my family would always wish me happy birthday first thing in the morning. Feels wrong not to do the same for you. Well, if we're still here in three months, I'll be sure to return the favor. Minus the climb, of course. Why do you say that? We've seen you climb during stealth exercises. You climb like a five-year-old. Come on, I'm not that bad. Pinto pointed at him. Admit it, you're afraid of heights. I am not afraid of heights. (laughs) All right, get out. We need to get ready. Fine, I'll see you in the dining hall. Over breakfast, Pinto and Vel discussed their theories for the long-awaited next filtration. But Yashi was more focused on Sunna. He was smiling with Quax and Keo as usual, but Yashi had an unexplainable hunch that he was slipping. Ever since the neutralizer exercise, he had been acting like his burial scene in the field had never happened, and everyone was playing along with it. As Yashi sat next to Sana in the lecture hall, he decided to confront him. Hey, Sana? Yes? Have you been feeling better? What do you mean? I mean, are you sure you're okay? I'm fine, Yashi. I pledge my allegiance to the Vakoi Empire. After taking their seats, Yashi continued. If you ever want to talk about- Yashi, enough mumbling back there. He closed his mouth, not because Professor Ember had told him to, but because she was holding a threatening stack of pages. I'll get straight to the point. We pushed you to your limits during your first month here, and since then we've given you plenty of space to recover. But now it's time to get back to business. In today's filtration, you'll be handed a variety of fictitious documents, including criminal profiles, interrogation transcripts, and witness reports. Your task is to assign three fictitious criminals to their punishments based on your memory of Guardian Protocol. You will have one hour to make your matches with no reference to your notes or discussion amongst each other. Any trainees who fail to match all three criminals correctly will be filtered from the program. It's a good thing I've been reviewing protocol. Pinto glanced back at Yashi as though he were saying, You're welcome. Professor Ember passed out their papers, and Yashi started to organize the documents by criminal name. He read through each stack thoroughly before referring to his answer sheet, which had a list of three names on the left and three punishments on the right. He had an easy time with two of the matches, The first criminal was detained for drug dealing, and according to protocol, deserved 10 years in detainment. The second criminal had insulted a guardian, earning himself three years of community service. Yashi drew two lines, connecting their names to their corresponding punishments. The third criminal, however, unsettled him. The fictitious guardian had broken a vow by failing to report his brother's involvement with the underground. Yashi empathized with the Guardian, who simply wanted to keep his brother safe. He wished he could make an exception to protocol, just for him. But there was no fourth option to draw a line to. So Yashi matched the criminal to the death penalty and turned his paper in. Twelve days later, Yashi had already forgotten the name of the filtered trainee who had failed to match his criminals to the correct punishments. He had become a master of forgetting the unimportant. 
Vel pointed to Yashi's glass. So, what's your assessment? He took a sip. His beet juice tasted the same as it always did, so he checked to see if Pinto's face had gone red. Unfortunately, Pinto had yet to touch his glass. Vel noticed Yashi's attempted shortcut and smiled. You're a cheat. Your game's no fun. Why? Is it too hard for you? Yashi took another sip and analyzed the lingering taste on his tongue with more concentration. He searched for a sweet aftertaste, but it wasn't there. No serum. Well, am I right? I'll tell you in a few minutes. You may change your mind. You're cruel, you know that? His smile faded at the sight of Pinto, who was scowling at his plate. He hadn't been acting like himself since a defense class four days prior, when Commander Roz introduced them to three primary tool options. Bow and arrows, dual swords, and throwing blades. On an undisclosed date, they would need to excel with one tool of choice, and Pinto had yet to show an interest in any of them. You take this detection thing too seriously, Vel. Detection is Yashi's weakest skill, and at some point we'll be tested on it. Pinto pursed his lips. They could never take any skill in the program too seriously. I was thinking Yashi and I could help you with tools during recreation time today. Why is that? You haven't performed well with any of them. It's only been a few days. I'm sure we'll connect with two eventually. I mean, I didn't think dual swords were right for me at first. But they grew on me. Exactly. You're acting like I'm the only one who hasn't chosen a tool yet. <sighs> I'm surprised. You don't normally cut yourself slack like this. We've had a busy few months. I think he deserves a little slack. I'm not cutting myself slack, okay? You're biased, both of you. It's not my fault that you picked your tools so quickly. True. But it is your fault that you haven't. Pinto continued eating, and Yoshi sighed in relief. He was brainstorming a new topic of discussion when Vel spoke again, reigniting the fire. I'm only trying to help. Maybe that's the problem. Pinto set his fork down. You're always getting involved when it's none of your business. Why don't you just worry about your own performance? Pinto. Because that's not how the three of us work. We made a deal to look out for each other. Vel wiped her hands with her table napkin, signaling her leave. Would you rather I care about you or your ego? She stood, and Pinto looked up at her with a widened eye. Wait, Vel. I'm sorry. I think the poison is making me irritable again. There was no Belladonna today. She turned to Yashi with a brief nod. Good job. As Vel headed for the door, Pinto leaned forward and covered his face with his palms. Hey, remember when you were worried about me getting filtered for misconduct? You reminded me that we're in this together. Vel is just doing her part. I know. It's not shameful to accept help. Like you said, we're not expected to be prodigies. Pinto let out a deep sigh as he dropped his hands. <sighs> I know. The air was poisonous that afternoon. Yoshi, Vel, and Pinto didn't speak to each other for the entirety of defense class. They practiced their tools on the opposite sides of the room and socialized with boys in the other groups. Yashi knew that Vel wasn't holding a grudge against him, but she also seemed to want nothing to do with anything remotely related to Pinto. The trio sat together for supper, but the silence dragged on. Yashi gave up on reviving the day and hoped for Pinto and Vel to cool down overnight. He was about to get into bed when Pinto started to lace his boots from across the quarter. Where are you going? Training room. It's late. I have some catching up to do. Pinto headed for the door. Wait, I'll come with you. In your pajamas? Is that against the rules? Yashi chuckled before following him into the lobby. Instead of heading down the staircase, Pinto approached room one and knocked. Vel was still dressed in her uniform when she opened the door. I want you to care about me, not my ego. Vel joined them in the lobby with a smile. Let's go. Yoshi dismounted a pair of swords from the training room wall. He'd grown used to their weight, and he cringed at the memory of when he'd nearly dropped them during his first practice session. Pinto and Vel watched him swing the blades through the air, 
practicing a sequence Commander Roz had taught him. The moves were rhythmic and unexpected at times, but always in perfect timing. He imagined that a dual sword sequence would look beautiful with music. The set of 20 motions ended with Yashi back in his starting position, one blade running down the right side of his back and the other pointing up toward his left shoulder. I never actually watched you perform a full sequence. You're incredible. Pinto raised a set of wooden practice swords. But would you mind showing me an easier one? Val sat cross-legged on the floor. She spun a four-bladed throwing star between her thumb and index finger as she watched Pinto rehearse the basic strikes and blocks. Yashi was correcting the transition of Pinto's grip on the handle when the training room door slid open. You kids are up late. I was about to do some exercise. At this hour? Insomnia. Oh, well, we can- No, you should stay. Motivation is a fleeting gift. I'd never knock it down while it's flying. Dr. Blemery looked at Pinto and smiled. Pinto with swords, huh? I always thought you'd be an archer. Very funny, Doctor. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, you think I'm joking, don't you? I have one eye. <laughs> I would think that would give you an advantage, considering how archers close an eye to aim. <laughs> good night. Huh. Well, he does have a point. I suppose I've never given the bow and arrow a fair chance. Yashi mounted the swords as Val offered Pinto a bow and arrow. He stared at the foreign tool in his hands before placing his feet slightly wider than shoulder length apart. With his eye on the target, he drew the arrow, aimed, and released. The arrow soared across the room before striking one of the smaller rims of the target. Pinto lowered his bow. Maybe Dr. Blim Blim isn't all that bad after all. Look at you. One eye and a giant bow in your hands. Talk about intimidating. And still, somehow, childish. Vel kicked a tin of arrows toward him. Finish these up. I'm going to quiz Yashi on medical. Have him quiz you on the Guardian Protocol too. Pinto plucked an arrow from the tin. Let's not forget how you nearly sentenced the man to five years of community service for drug dealing. We could have lost you. <laughs> I never should have told you about that. <laughs> Pinto chuckled in amusement as he drew his second arrow, but Belle's face drained of color. She crossed her arms and turned to Yashi. <sighs> Would you mind fetching a book from my quarter? It's the red one. It'll help you memorize bone names. Yashi nodded. Got it. Pinto shot another arrow. It struck even closer to the bullseye. <sighs> Take that, target. On his way to the staircase, Yashi spotted a light glowing through a hallway window. He paused to stare at the golden light for a moment before making his way to the second floor. He entered Vel's room, grabbed the red book, and walked back to the staircase. After a few steps upstairs, he turned around, deciding to head down to the common room instead. He crept past the door to the guardian quarters, his footsteps nearly soundless. Through the window, he spotted two figures in the distance. One was definitely a trainee, as he was dressed in identical golden pajamas and was holding an academy lantern. The other, however, was dressed in dark clothes and stood next to a black horse. The horses in our stable are white. Yashi thought of returning to Pinto and Vel as though he'd seen nothing, but his curiosity took over. He approached the common room door, which was already unbarred. He set Bell's book on the floor and stepped outside. The air was strikingly cold. The weather had started to cool down lately, especially at night. He shivered in his thin pajamas as he walked down the front steps. When he reached the courtyard, the golden light began to move toward him. Yashi ducked behind a bush by the staircase and peeked over it. The cloaked figure was riding down the forested road. Yashi squinted as the approaching trainee entered the courtyard. Nice being. Yashi lowered his head, and the bush rustled. He held his breath as Dice's footsteps came to a halt. Hello? Dice started to approach the bush. You'll surely find me anyway. Yashi stood up. I saw you meet someone. Dice's lantern illuminated the horror on his face. Communication with the outside world, unless organized by the Guardians themselves, was strictly prohibited in the contract they had signed on Selection Day. They were bound to that contract in blood. If you tell the Guardians, 
I'll lie, and you won't have proof. Dice's voice trembled, and Yashi could tell he was bluffing. Was that a relative? Dice looked away. Yes. You're lying, aren't you? Dice, what's going on? Can't tell you. <laughs> a brief chuckle slipped through Dice's lips, which felt oddly out of place. Dice took a step toward him, and Yashi gathered his strength not to step away. Listen, you're not safe here. You need to get filtered for your own sake. Why? You should have listened to your father on selection day. Yashi stumbled backward. How do you know about that? Dice grunted as he hurled his lantern at the ground. Yeah. The air darkened, and Dice ran in an unknown direction. Yashi chased him blindly. His boot struck a piece of the broken lantern, and he fell head first onto the courtyard. His chin scraped the bricks, and shards of glass cut into his wrists as he pushed himself to his feet. He ignored the blood dripping down his fingertips and trudged his way up the stairs. A horse neighed in the distance, followed by galloping. Yashi looked over his shoulder to see a white horse disappear into the woods. He ran into the common room and knocked repeatedly on the door to the guardian quarters. Help! Guardians! Help! Eventually, he heard footsteps. Dr. Blimmery opened the door and his jaw dropped. Yashi! It's, it's Dice! You're bleeding! He, he's gone! Belladonna, Book One, Nightshade Academy. Written and narrated by Mel Tori Franca. Produced by Mel Tori Franca and Wilson Hensley. Edited and mastered by Juan Pablo Diaz. How did we get here? Something went wrong. We worked hard for this life that we don't want at all. Cover art by Mad Studio. Score by Jida Puspita Osri. Theme song composed and produced by James Sinclair Stott. Starring Jason Brown, Anthony Andreas Echeverri, Philip Krajanov, Melissa White, Alex Bowie, Patrick Virzba, Julia Risto, David John Bors, Connor Blanc, Cody Keel, Ellie Chua, Ben Autry, Walter Mack. If it's really true that the sky weeps with us, if it's really true that heroes live in stars. Featuring the voices of Gwyneth Evans, Jeff Rosenau, Lucas Hensley, Levi Titus, Angie Eggers, Willem Degar, Allison Prophet, Maria Palmo. Nightshade Academy is produced in association with Lost Island Press. If it's really true.